Steph Curry is nine three-pointers away from passing Reggie Miller for second most all time. Took Reggie 18 seasons. It's going to take Steph just over 11 when he gets there. Warriors taking on the Knicks. Draymond Green showing some range. Curry, with the fancy pass right there. Green finishes. Under three minutes left in the second, now Warriors down five. James Wiseman, who's coming off his best game of his young NBA career against the Spurs the other night. Out to Curry from Curry distance. He had 20 points in the first half. Had five threes in the game, so he's four away from passing Reggie now. But this was an important part of the game. Late in the first half, Draymond Green going to get his sec second technical foul. Now, he was talking to his teammate Wiseman. The referee thinks... Draymond's talking to him, and, and you know when it comes out of Draymond's mouth, it might have been a little vulgar. However, I think he was innocent on this. Doesn't matter. Gets ejected. 11th career ejection, third most since entering the league in 2012. And again, the Knicks, 7-8 and eight on the year coming into this one. Playing some good basketball right now. They're up 7. You're going to get more here from R.J. Barrett, who had a career-high 28 points in this contest. The Knicks up 13 after 3. Early fourth, we're up 11. Obi Toppin, doing what he does best. Oh my goodness. Gets up, puts it down. The Knicks winning 119-104 on the Warriors. Longest win streak in the NBA belongs to the Utah Jazz Quintet. Coach Schneider's club six in a row as they took on the Pelicans. I see Zion, that must mean dunks are coming. First though, Lonzo Ball. That's it, Brandon Ingram. He's just a thin, wiry guy, but he's an all-star Ingram again. First quarter, 16 points. Didn't miss a shot. Nice six man. of six. He is motivated. Pelicans up five. There was more. J.J. Redick, he's got it. Throw it up the rim. There you go. Look at Zion take flight. Pelicans scored 43 in the first quarter. Second most they've ever put up in the opening quarter. 14 assists. They were up 12. Things were going great. Quinn Snyder's like, we better do something better in the second quarter. So you know what they did? Something better in the second quarter. They turned uh, Donovan Mitchell loose on the people. Ooh. A dish here to Derek Favors is sweet. And then he decided to make 7 of 11 from the floor. Put up 21 points of his own. Presto, they win that quarter 39-26. And they're up one at the break. Third quarter, Mitchell off the screen. Easy right there. You go under the screen, he's going to shoot it over you. Six threes in the game. And Mitchell again. How's my vision? Well, it's good enough that I see. Royce O'Neal standing over there looking to shoot three-pointers. Uh, they're up nine. They blow it up to 14. Mitchell on the break. Joe Ingles going to finish it. Mitchell, 36 points, five assists. Jazz win their seventh straight. Didn't trail in the fourth quarter at any point. 129-118 is the final. After Super Bowl championship and MVP, what can you do? To Back to Toyota Warriors post game live. Warriors led very briefly early in the game. Last night they led wire to wire tonight. And New York averages about 100 points a game, so they didn't defend tonight. The Knicks scored 119. Steph Curry had 30. Andrew Wiggins had 17. James Wiseman, 15 off the bench. A nice night for Eric Pascal, who had to start the second half after Draymond was ejected. He had 12 points. So the story of the game, obviously, is Draymond's ejection. 64 seconds to go in the first half. He gets run by referee John Butler. Carrot Burke, you know she's going to ask uh, Steve Kerr the most salient question. Let's get a reaction right now from the head coach. Carrot Burke, NBC Sports Bay Area. Did the referees give you an explanation for Draymond's second technical? Uh, yeah, at halftime, um, uh, Ben Taylor came out and told me that uh, it was a mistake that uh, he didn't realize that uh, or that uh, John Butler didn't realize that Draymond was yelling at his teammate. He thought he was yelling at him. I understand people make mistakes. I'm sure you'd say the same. How did it impact the rest of the game that Draymond couldn't play in the second half? Well, I mean, obviously, um, Draymond is, um, you know, one of our best and most impactful players. So uh, it hurt us, but we were playing very poorly to that point uh, anyway. So um, I'm not going to talk about the officiating. I'm going to talk about our, our poor play. Um, we, we just foul constantly. Um, you can't win. We're, we're dead last in the league in fouls, I think, and free throw attempts allowed. 
Um, and you can't win games when you just foul, foul, foul. You're, you're constantly having to bring the ball up out of the net after the team shooting free throws. You can't build any rhythm at all. We had four fouls in the first 55 seconds of the fourth quarter. Uh, so we are who we are, and I, I obviously have to do a better job. Um, we're undisciplined, and uh, we've got to find a way to defend without fouling, obviously. What is the main issue, would you say there? Because like you said, you're trying to build this defensive you know, habitat, but right, right. clearly over fouling. What's the problem? Uh, mindless reaching, mindless um, decision-making. Um, defensively i mean we, you know we've got a, a very long and athletic uh team and we've got an opportunity to be very good defensively i've been touting our defense uh especially since draymond came back but play after play you got um you know guards getting into the paint and you know instead of having to shoot a floater over james wiseman or draymond green we're just hacking guys uh, from behind right across the wrist as if we're gonna uh, get a steal or something. So we're just totally undisciplined defensively. Um, generally, we play hard, and I love our guys' effort. But, um, you know, I told them the other day that it's hard to win in this league night after night um, on talent and emotion. You can't count on that. There's going to be nights where you go 9 for 38 from the three-point line. Um, and there's going to be nights when you're tired and you're on the second night of a back-to-back -back and you don't have the same juice. And so the way to win those games is by executing, taking good shots, having good defensive balance, uh, defending without fouling, rebounding, being solid. So we are not that team yet. So I'm hopeful that we can get there. But right now we are, uh, as I said, dead last in the league and free throws allowed, um, fouls, uh, rebounds so we are not a solid team we're uh, we can be a good team but we have a long way to go uh hi steve carlos ramirez <clears throat> sorry carlos ramirez nbc bay area and telling window how can you get a rhythm on a game that has 58 fouls called you can't oh, I mean, you can't. And and when you're in the game, do you see, I mean, I'm looking for a parallel. When you're in a baseball game, you see that the ref might have, and the umpire might have a different strike zone. Do you, do you see refs having different foul zones or ways of calling the game? And do you tell that to a player, like, okay, let's have a different approach or just go out and play? In baseball, if the ump calls a strike, it's a strike. If, if he calls a ball, it's a ball. Nobody's reaching. The catcher's not reaching and raking the pit, the batter across the arms. We are raking people across the arms. We are grabbing people by the waist coming off uh, screens. We're fouling. It's, it has nothing to do with the refs. Uh, it has to do with us. So we practice uh, defensive fundamentals every day, <clears throat> and it's it's obviously not enough. So I've got to think of some way to get across to these guys, uh, you know, how we're going to defend. And maybe it just means if a guy reaches, he comes out, you know, and forget the defense or the uh, rotation, you know, just take a few games where if you reach, you come out and we just have a uh, bunch of guys filing in and out of the game. And if they reach, they come out and then another guy goes in and next guy comes out when he reaches. And that's the only thing I can think of because we practice defense without fouling every day and it's it's not happening so we've got to somehow find a win steve kendra andrews nbc sports bay area you were just talking about different tactics to try and improve some of those things and earlier on in the season you said you would have to adjust your coaching for this kind of team a team that's trying to work their way back up in the league how are those adjustments going for you do you think that you need to make more adjust adjustments moving forward Yes, the main adjustment I need to make is to get across to the without fouling or we're not going to be good. So I have to figure out what that adjustment is. Uh, 
Um, hi, Steve. Uh, when Draymond Green and Steph Curry aren't in the game, who do you look to be the catalyst of your team? Well, the reason I put Nico Mannion in the game in the third quarter, I was looking for a spark, and he's an excellent passer. And um, with Draymond out, uh, obviously Steph is uh, going to draw a lot of attention, and I wanted to put another ball handler um, into the game to uh, to get Steph off the ball. But, you know, Dr Steph and Draymond are our leaders, and if uh, one of them's out, if both both of them's out, it's up to the entire team to pick up the slack and and uh, and help us execute. But uh, we did not execute. We didn't turn the ball over a ton. Uh, Ten turnovers total, which is a really good number. But our shot selection, they must have blocked felt like they blocked about 20 shots. Um, we just kept barreling into the lane trying to shoot over uh, Robinson and and uh, and Noel. And, um, you know, our sense of drive and kicking was, was nowhere near where it needed to be. Greg Popovich left town after the game. No, he did night. not.